I'm Jeff Bospisil, the 10-Minute Treasurer, with practical advice for improving your church's financial future. In this video, I'm going to be going over an aspect of QuickBooks, and that's understanding the check memos. Um, I do use QuickBooks online, and so there might be some differences between that and the desktop version, and I also have a cold, so this will sound a little funky probably. So here's the situation. You know, I like to print out my uh, checks in QuickBooks. I think it looks clean, neat, professional, all that kind of stuff. But every now and then, and especially with like pass-through gifts, I would need to add a personal note in the memo or on the check stub. And what I do is I'd handwrite it in there. And my handwriting doesn't look nearly as good as this. So it just ruined that whole appearance of professionalism. And one of my clients called me out on this and said, could you fix this? So I decided I'd better learn. So that's what I'm doing right here. So here we are on QuickBooks Online, and hopefully I haven't zoomed in enough for you to be able to follow along. And I'm gonna show you how I would normally print a check. So I would go ahead and enter the bill. And for an example, I'm just gonna use JCT Accounting Company. And all the default information and anything from my last bill that I paid shows up, uh, but I'm gonna put in an invoice number one, two, three, and I'm not gonna change anything else. So then in the memo, I'm going to put great job, dude. And my assumption when I very first started using QuickBooks was that what I put in the bill memo would be what shows up on the check memo. Um, just that's, I guess, my assumption. Um, so let's go ahead and pay bills. And I'm going to check that. And we're going to go ahead and save and print this. And wait for it to load. There it goes. And now preview it. And so here's my check and here's my check stub. And you can see there's my invoice number, but there's nothing in the memo, nothing in the memo, but at least the check stub printed out um, the check stub. Again, that has the invoice number. So for nine out of 10 bills uh, that you pay, or maybe it's even more than that, that's really what you need. The vendor needs to see that invoice number or that statement number. Um, but I didn't get anything in the memo and that's the problem. So what I did notice is that my check memo wasn't always blank. Um, some vendors, they'll assign you an account number. And when I enter that in the vendor file, it would show up in the check memo. And I'll just show you real quickly how um, that works. So let's go ahead and look up JCT accounting in my search, JCT. And there's my vendor. And let's go ahead and go to vendor details. And I'm going to edit this. And if you look there, there's the account number and it says it always appears in all uh, in the memo for all payments. So I'm just going to enter in a, a random number 995 and we're going to go ahead and try to repay that bill. So let's go ahead and go to new and pay bills. And it looks like I need to delete a payment first. So I'm going to go ahead and look for that here in my recent transactions and there it is uh, bill payment check and since I really didn't print it I'm just going to go ahead and delete it and yes I want to delete it and now I can go ahead and I can uh, pay bills check that save and print and let's go ahead and preview that and so you still don't, now you can see the account number there, 995. You can see um, the rest of the check stub as well, but there's, uh, you don't see the great job dude yet either. So that at least got us part of the way there. So that is not a good solution for if you want a custom check memo. I, I mean, I can't imagine going into the vendor file, updating that account number, printing the check and then remembering to go back in the vendor file and deleting out that account number. Um, that's just gonna end up uh, being forgotten and causing a pain sometime in the future. So what instead I came across for a solution, and this is what I'm gonna use, is I'm, instead of going to bills, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to check. And so vendors check and I type in JCT accounting and I'm going to use a different date just so it'll make it easier for me to find it. So 52821 and print later. 
and I'll enter the expense as accounting expense and this ends up being the same as uh, the invoice number and that will print on the check stub that test does and I just put in an amount and I'm going to put in the memo great job dude and so you'll see um, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, actually I'm going to go ahead and print the check and you can see the 528 one and I'm going to preview it and so here you scroll down and you can see my memo great job dude and if you scroll down a little further you can see test which was my invoice ID so you can have both worlds there the the check memo the custom check memo as well as the invoice ID if you do it that way and I should probably have added a disclaimer in the beginning, but I'm not a QuickBooks expert. You know, I just want to do a good job. And so what I'm trying to do this summer is, is to learn more and then share with you what I'm learning. So hopefully this will be helpful to you. If it is, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that's great. And again, uh, this is a ministry of the Dakotas Conference of the United Methodist Church, as well as the Dakotas United Methodist Foundation. All right. God bless.